The Trump administration today implementing an America First offshore energy strategy. President Trump signing an executive order that directs a review of the locations available for offshore oil and gas exploration. Locations, by the way, the President Obama had classified as off limits. So, what should investors consider when it comes to the energy sector? Is this a big deal? Joining me now to give us his outlook is Opus Chief Oil Analyst Denton Sinkagrana. And Denton, thank you so much for being here. My um, pleasure. Is this a big deal? Is there just copious amounts of oil out there that's going to flood the markets because of this executive order? Probably not. Okay. But <laughs> those that are going to be looking in there, if there's any out there, they'll be able to find it. But there's also going to be the kind of fight with some of the local governments who don't want to potentially look at drilling rigs off, the, off their coast. Yeah, and there's a lot of them. I mean, over 100 communities, I believe, just on the East Coast alone. West Coast, pretty much, forget it. Yep. So does that limit the opportunities? Probably not. They could always go uh, deeper as well, right. into, into the deeper into the water. But, um, you know, suffice to say, if there's anything out there, they're going to be able to find it. But finding it mm -hmm. is not cheap, is it? It's not cheap. And it takes a long time. How, how long are we correct. talking? You know, it could be um, anywhere from roughly seven years. Uh, wow. So it's not like we're going to start this tonight and oil is going to come to the market tomorrow. So the, long, the lead time on these projects are really long. Uh, like I said, you're looking at probably about seven years from kind of start to finish. But then you look at the shale revolution and shale oil in, in West Texas and, and places like that. That's about seven months. So you got your whole seven and seven oil <laughs> wow. cocktail, and I don't think it's one you want to drink, though. We're pumping out a lot of oil. The, uh, the oil rate count is going up. Do we need to be drilling more? I mean, I mean, from an economics point of view, for the companies doing this, how much does a barrel of oil have to get to before it becomes... Bef you know, ad because then it becomes economical to do it. If it's still at 53 bucks or $49 a right. barrel right now, is it economical to go drill in the, uh, in the Atlantic or the Pacific or the Arctic? Out in the, out in the ocean and, and the, the yeah. deep water, no. But on land uh, in West Texas and places like sure. that, they're, they're finding it economical. These guys have gotten so good at what they do. Um, a couple years ago, you were talking about an uh, $80, $90 break-even price. Now, right. depending on who you talk to, $30, $40. So these guys are doing pretty wow. well right now just because they've gotten so good at what they do. What does this do to OPEC? It has to be sweat and bullets right now because, you know, the shale revolution in this country, the OPEC uh, official line was, no, 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 that's not a big deal. They've got to be nervous that this country is continuing to drill and pump out a lot of oil. Is it making them irrelevant? Uh, I, think you could, I think you can argue that their relevance has gone down significantly. Um, with that being said, as much as we're producing now, we're back, back over 9 million barrels a day, we still import about 8 million barrels a day of oil. Uh, a lot of, of that our, from Canada. Though, yes, right? exactly. They're the largest importer to yeah. the U.S. So it's not like you know we, we, we import from a lot of these bad places that are not friendly with us. But well, we've always always complained why are we so dependent on Middle East and oil, and we have friends in the region because we need the oil. Are we getting to to a point where we don't even have to worry about Middle East oil? We're never are we, gonna are we get ever there. going to see that? In I don't think we ever will, because you have various joint ventures and contracts and stuff right, like that, right. where where some of these Middle Eastern countries have have these joint ventures where they have an outlet for their oil. So um, I don't think you'll ever get to zero, but it's it's been reduced significantly over the last several years. Okay. Uh, the Obama administration's ban on on many of the drilling in many of these areas did it have a big impact? I don't think so, because at that same time, you know, we, met, we talked about the shell phenomenon. And yeah. again, I, I, would, I would stress that it's not a phenomenon. It's an absolute game changer. Um, mm. Some of the lost production out in deep waters and stuff like that has been made up by the drilling on land that we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, okay, so this move today by the president, this executive order, he talked about it, he's carried through with it. Um, is this a boon for the oil companies or are they just going to wait and see? I think it's a wait and see approach. I think you need higher prices, obviously, before yeah, you even, even yeah. start to consider it. Very interesting. <laughs> I, wouldn't it be great we didn't have to rely on anyone else, but just our... It seems like we have the oil, so we're getting there, as they getting say. Getting closer. Denton, thank you so much for being here. Anytime, Appreciate my pleasure.